Biological control is a technique whereby we use natural enemies to combat pests. Those pests can be insects, they can be mites, pathogens, and very often also plants which have developed into weeds. Most of the time, or mo we are most successful if we do this against invading pests. The beauty is that once something works, it spreads on its own and it does its business irrespective of difficulties. Well, what I just said all pertains, for instance, to our first big project which brought me here in the first place against the Kasawa mealybug. This mealybug was introduced in the end of the 70s into Africa eventually parasites were found in in South America and then transported to England here most of the releases were made from the ground in most releases I was involved but always together with the national programs we made something like about 150 releases in most sub-Saharan African countries. From there we actually went to do other projects. And the first one was not, not those wheat pro were not those wheat projects, but the project on um, on mango mealybug. And from there we went on to what is called the spiraling white fly with two parasitoids. And then as you mentioned, yes, to water weeds, water hyacinth, water lettuce, water, water fern. Fire control is good. It lowers the pest, but it would have been better not to introduce the, those organisms, exotics, in the first place. So we need a strengthening of the quarantine facilities, of the training of the quarantine people, uh, awareness building of the importance of quarantine in all African countries. And quarantine is not land borders between Togo and, and Benin, those cannot be controlled, but at the level of the seaports and the airports, we need a better control so such invasions which cost so much can be reduced. The Kasama mealybug project brought in as much money directly to the farmers as, as all the cassava improvement projects in Africa did over all the years. And ours is finished and it continues. That's the beauty of, the, of this technique, it continues. Our challenge is the uptake by the countries. Countries are or autonomous in, in their decisions to import or not to import. So we had to, we had to, we had to convince something like uh, 30 quarantine authorities that uh, they should give us import permits, they should help us, they should allow the insect to come in and so on. The challenges later are even even with colleagues with, um, of, of different disciplines, because I, as I said, we don't extinguish anything. And so there is always this, this little peak which appears again, colleagues phone you, tell you, you no know, biocontrol is breaking down and so on. The public is so afraid of other insects, but we also have to contribute our part by, by making this non-target effect an important issue, which it wasn't at the beginning when I started work. It can break down in technical terms when, especially when, when biocontrol is working and you forget about it, and then suddenly you start spraying, uh, spraying other insects, and it affects our parasite. Then we have a, a, a flare-up. 
the demand is certainly there. There are always new organisms coming, but then we have to maintain those capacities. And unfortunately, the capacities worldwide in biocontrol, not only at IETA, are, if anything, declining. I'm the last survivor at IITA. You see here what they wrote me when I retired, that was in six years ago. And I simply stayed on, I'm working here every day. I'm still, I still had students, but now they are, uh, they all finished their studies. I'm still helping out. I want to see it, so see it through those difficult times. The excitement, of course, is to go out in the field. I had a very privileged job of traveling all of Africa in the bush. <laughs> I like that. Uh, but exciting is also when you, <laughs> very human, when you get recognition. And it is interesting that in the scientific world, the Kasava Milibak project was seen as a success. I was interesting in, in, in Ghana, a boy of about 12 years, he came towards me and he explained to me in all detail what the Kasawa Milibak did and what there was. And he had seen that uh, in an outside village outside, how people watch and see it. I mean, the fact that we were invited by all those countries in the end, it always showed some, some confidence. I have on my computer now requests to go to Asia because after sort of 20, 30 years after Africa, suddenly the Kasava Milibak turned up in Asia, in Thailand. And it is spreading and we are asked to to introduce biocontrol of it in, in Thailand. Mm -hmm.